proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello, welcome back to Furious Driving, and today I've got a plan. Quentin, the cursed Rover convertible, is going to go back together, make everything ready for an MOT, and maybe I can even book one for a day when it's not raining. At least he unlocks. That's always a good start. Come on, Quentin. Why have you stopped again? I can't hear the pump again. I don't believe it. I cannot hear the pump yet again. Every time. I need new wiper blades. Every time I think this car is going to be okay, I can go and do some stuff and progress the project and finish it. <laughs> Stupid car. Earth again then. Oh, I really thought I'd be driving this car around the block today. Dropping it off at the garage or something. Right, okay, last time it was this. It was a bad earth just here. It's not got a great earth. God, you can actually just pull the battery straight off. I'm gonna get some like, metal tape or something to tighten that up a bit more. So I need to start undoing a few earths, cleaning them up and putting them back together again. Good fun. Good times, as someone else on the internet says. Well, that earth was a little bit grubby. This one I did the other day, so that should be absolutely immaculate. There's no reason for that not to be working. It's 10 mil. Let's do that one again. While I'm hunting around for whatever bad earth I've got on this car, I will top up the transmission fluid because this is what well, apparently is the correct one. I went down to the local uh, parts store, gave them the registration number. That apparently is the correct fluid. It's work out how to funnel fluid down past the air inlet, that cable, and down into there. Because it will fill out the bottom when I unplug the wrong sensor. And I don't want to forget to top it up before I drive the car, if I ever drive the car. This quite literally can't go well. No, it's going to miss, it's going to hit, no, it's not going to hit. I need to get a bit of funnel or cardboard or something. Genius like a diamond bullet. Whoops, let's not go too far. Oh, not genius, it's running down the side of the gearbox. Oh, bum old. Nearly genius. Genius-ish. Borderline genius. Well, some went in the gearbox, which is better than none going in the gearbox. This rag is not very absorbent as far as transmission fluid goes. Next shopping trip, buy more blue rag. Ugh. Well, I didn't spill too much, so that's not too bad. I need to clean up the little okay. dollop just there from the dirty rag. But now it's pop master, so I will join you in 10 minutes. Well, I'm going to have to drag it forward so I can get underneath it and check the earth down by the, uh, or the cables down by the fuel pump. It's the first time I've used the Volvo as a tow hitch. I'm hoping it'll go well. Fortunately, my neighbour who often parks across the uh, entrance to our drive is out at the moment. So, what's someone doing here? So I can go straight forwards, otherwise I wouldn't have a hope of doing this. I'm just about to scrape by with the Tomcat because I can go sideways, but the Volvo is so long, forget it. With the uh, exhaust off, it's actually quite easy to reach through and see this connector which goes to the front of the car. So I can then stick my test meter into those pins and see if I'm getting any voltage or not. Hold on. Now, I'm not sure what you're seeing because I'm trying to work and film at the same time. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. I don't know which, which pin is which, I've forgotten. No. 
a little bit of voltage there, six and a half. So there's voltage going through. Hmm, okay. So there's a problem at the pump end again. I've just picked up some crud. Well, I just checked the car battery and that's still got a solid, well, 12 volts on it. So it's interesting, we're only getting six volts down at the fuel pump end. Just do a quick check, like I did previously on the dead pump, whether or not I've actually got any life in this one. I'm hooking up to a couple of these little live wires. Always good fun and potentially dangerous. So I don't seem to have any life in the new fuel pump. So I wonder if it's picked up some crud from the old tank perhaps, blocked itself. That'd be really bad if it had. Well, while I've got everything up in the air and because I'm addressing multiple headaches at once with this car, I'll come back to the fuel tank pump deadness issue and I'll stick that exhaust on there because that's just in the way while it's hanging around in the boot of the Merc. Oh, come on, you so and so. God, I hate exhaust hangers. Right, that's one kind of halfway in. There we go, that's easier. Should have done that one first round. Oh, God, exhaust hangers are the worst. Well, that was quick and easy. This thing's got a gasket on it. So let's just line it up and bolt it up. That's three ugly duggers tight, which I think is probably tight enough. Now normally, I'd now start the engine and make sure it's not blowing. Obviously with this car, that's not an option. Now the other job I've got to do on this corner of the car while the car is in the air is change the wheels over, or change this wheel over anyway, while it's on jack, because these tyres on the Coupe Tomcat's original 15-inch wheels are, are they 15s or are they 14s? They're 15s. They are significantly better condition than the MGF tyres that came on the car. The MGF wheels look really nice, but those tyres, oh, they were sat for seven years, static, and the time has not been kind. The cracks are like the Grand Canyon. They are ravines. Uh, too dangerous even to drive a couple of miles up to the nearest MOT station. Um, so I'm going to borrow the coupe's wheels until we've got an MOT on it. And once we have, then I'll look at buying some nicer, newer tyres. But I'm not going to risk buying any in case they say something like the car is condemned, can never be driven on the road. Because let's face it, it could happen. And for anyone who says I'm not using an impact socket on this, I know I'm not using an impact socket on this. I thought I bought a 19mm impact socket. I've got long and short 17s, but I can't find the 19. I think it's either in the lockup with the Rover 2000, or I didn't buy one after all, I'm just imagining it, which is a possibility. I know that's sitting crazy high right now, but these wheels actually look really quite good on this car. I might leave them on there. Right, so I'm going to use the theory that if I leave the car long enough, eventually it will start. It was worth a try. Oops. Ah! Just put T on the engine. Never mind, I'm sure it's fine. Can't make it any worse, can it? Right, so next up on project ignoring the big problems, focus on the things I can do, is let's change this wing, well not so nice to change the wing, let's refit this wing properly with the indicator and the bumper fitted correctly so it's all MOTable. And people have commented, are you going to paint that wing? Yes, obviously I am going to paint the wing. I've also got a new bonnet on the way from uh, Nitro Silver. It's not the correct colour, but I'll have them both painted the correct colour by a body shop so the front end will look absolutely fantastic. There are a few little spots of rust on this, but they're really only surface rust, so when that's all cleaned up, um, taken back to bare metal, rust treated, this will have many years of not being rusty ahead of it. So first up, there's a big lug on the back of this thing which needs to slide into the back of the wing. That's oh, sorry, the back of the bumper. I'm not quite sure how you do that without bending everything apart. That's it, that's in there, excellent. Okay, we now have a bumper connected to the wing, but not behind the door. 
I've been scratched. There we go. Right, let's bolt all this stuff together. Look at that, my mug matches the, uh, the wing. Um, right, I was going to say, yeah, if I now I just need to figure out where all these go because it's been weeks since I took them off. That one needs a spanner. Now this finisher should clip under here, but I'm going to leave it off for the moment because these are plastic clips and every time you use a plastic clip it gets weaker and one's already broken off and it's going to have to come off for this whole front end to be painted anyhow, so I will leave this out to avoid damaging it for the time being. So it's just a little cross point screwdriver, a Phillips, to tighten that one in there and we're done at the front. And before I go and deal with the hole on the other side, I've just skimmed that weld I did on this hole in the sill on the front with a little bit of filler just to kind of disguise it. I can uh, sand that back, make it look a bit prettier when it's dry and it won't be so obvious I've had to do a massive great weld, which is actually which is actually all this area here. It's just the edges I'm skimming over because it's not very tidy where the two bits of metal meet. And while I've got the jack and all the tools out, let's change this other front wheel for the coupe rim. So they're both 15s, I thought they were, for some reason, I thought one was a 15 one was a 16, but they are both 15s, but these are 185 wide, and these are also 185 wide. Why does the offset look so different then? Oh, While well, I'm here, so look at the brake pads. Um, they're pretty much worn out, to be honest. I don't know if you can actually see that on this, but there's about four millimeters or three millimeters of pad material left. Not really very much, but enough for it to drive and be okay for, a, well, certainly do a few hundred miles on that. It's due a change, but I'm not going to rush out and do it immediately because obviously we've got bigger fish to fry at the moment. Once it's got through the MOT, tyres and brakes can be done, assuming, assuming it passes, but I don't see why it won't. Now I am saving these rather nice little Rover dust caps. I'm going to go and put them on the coupe because they look quite cool. And this will lead to more questions as to why there are car parts in the garden because these need to go and sit behind the house for a few days now. I had kind of forgotten about the back of the car and put some seam sealer around this so it doesn't go horrible. And also, I need to put the number plate back on. And in opening that up, I had forgotten about just how disgusting this carpet is. This is really, really rank. That's probably a health hazard. In fact, definitely a health hazard. That could go in the bin, really. And the wooden bit as well. Oh my word, that wooden bit is not nice. But at least the uh, spare tire is decent. It's flat, but it's decent. It's a Dunlop, so I'll pump it up and see if it'll hold air. Now, I thought I'd hit record, but it turns out I hadn't. Again, it's sometimes that red button is a little bit fiddly. I've just used a bunch of Sikaflex 252 to fill in the black uh, broken mounting points that bolt through to the other side of the boot lid um, so that this will bond, or not just there it isn't, just bond on <laughs> to the panel. Because the way this thing works, I've, the glue is starting to work now so I won't pull it off and reshoot it. Uh, behind this panel here for example where it's flexed in a circle there are four or six black plastic um, mushrooms, the fat end glued to this plastic bit here they go through bolts through the metal. A friend up north, I think in Manchester, has actually got one of these in the correct colour that I said I could have. Um, we were going to exchange it at a Rover event that I don't think ever actually happened or I didn't go because of lockdown and things. Um, so I would repair this for the time being and then when the time comes that we can actually meet up again, I assume I've still got the car, we can exchange that part and I can fit that undamaged one then. These aren't the original number plates. I don't really like the red line around them. So I think I'll get some nice new ones made up for it. Do you know what? I actually kind of think I prefer it on these original wheels to the MGF wheels. The MGF wheels look really nice, but I don't know. So this is potentially the last obstacle to this car getting an MOT. I'll ignore that bit. But this is the last obstacle to this car getting an MOT. So let's peel this off a bit so we can get access. Grind all this back. i pull this panel off if I can without breaking it. And uh, yeah, get that ground back. Maybe tack up a bit of stuff on there. I actually really like these because they're a lot less aggressive and destructive so you can have a go at the paintwork without damaging the metal surrounding so much. Well it's only a little hole so we just cut this little bit of rotten edge off and then we'll see what we do about fixing it. Well that's quite a neat little hole. I just need to cut a little bit of cardboard template, make something that kind of matches that. 
and uh, I'll quickly zap that in. Hopefully, it'll only take a, a few minutes. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. It won't take a few minutes. It's going to take all afternoon. Honestly, it's going to take forever. Now, I'm sitting here having a bit of a, a random thought because I'm just finished playing with panel bond. This isn't a high stress part of the car. Could I panel bond this on here? Or would it be easier to just zap it on with the welder? Just fill it with the cardboard, that's a nice fit actually. So I've just tried a couple of times cutting out a proper bit of metal to go in there, but it's a double curve and then you've got to wrap it back round on the end and I cannot seem to get the shape just right and I'm getting bored of this game. So I am going to use this stuff which is aluminium mesh which I can then stick behind there and bend into shape, glue it on the side of the car and then fill it over with P38, which I know is not brilliant. It's better to weld it, but I just want it done. And because I'm not a complete animal, I'm going to go in some zinc primer. Actually, I'll protect this bit a bit. There. Yeah, zinc, zinc prime up in there, so at least that's all not going to rust. Let's let it dry for five minutes, and I'll go and bond this in. Right, so that is now panel bonded nicely in place. It's going to take a little while for that to actually set. I'm not quite sure how long panel. Oops, I'm not quite sure how long panel bond takes to dry because um, when I did it inside the car, I just left it all weekend and came back to it. So I think it's going to be a few hours at the very least. So I'll leave that alone for a while and then sign off. So jobs for tomorrow, because I'm doing this as daily videos now, because you know, it's, it's lockdown and this is kind of stuff to do really, isn't it? I uh, will P38 that and gob it all in there so it looks nice and tidy and you can't tell it's been fixed. Don't tell anyone, you haven't seen me, right? Um, give it a splot of uh, undercoat so it's all nice. Then when the car goes to the paint shop, we can get that corner blown in as well. Take this off to the hole nicely. Uh, secondly, clean the interior. A big old cleaning video is to come on this because that leather, I think will come up really, really nicely once it's all done. Um, try and work out why it won't start. That's really baffling and I have no idea what's wrong with the car. So yeah, we'll come back to that one as well. A lot to keep circling back to, because um, I don't want to have to push it to the MOT station and see if they can test it without the engine running. I'm pretty sure you can't. Um, right, so I'm going to have a cup of tea and edit this video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all that stuff. It's YouTube, you know you've got to do it.